Thank you. Johnny, you know something about power boat racing. Well, not really, mate, you know. <laughs> I know something about rubber, though. Rubber Johnny, they used to call me years ago. Do you remember that? How many, uh, power boat, how many round Britons have you taken part in? I've, I've done all of them. So that's 69, that's 40 years ago, and 84. And Graham and I are the only two who completed each and every leg. Of each round break. Well, that's a remarkable accomplishment. Homemade cheese straws. Homemade cheese straws. Here we are having this little party. But Johnny, what's the boat you're racing this time? It's a 32 foot Revenger with a stepped hull with 600 horsepower on it. Not the most environmentally friendly boat, so we called it carbon neutral. Right, well, we come and have a look at some of your carbon neutral after you've had lunch. Thank you, Johnny Carl. Thank you. Marcus, how are you feeling? Fine, a bit nervous as usual when those things happen. First time in life, getting started. I think we really look forward to it. Well, we look forward to seeing you safely in Plymouth. So do we. See you on the party for this. We're with Fabio Butzi now. Fabio, how do you feel about the race today? I feel happy to be here with many friends uh, that I uh, remind from 1984, uh, eventually including you. Indeed. And what was the most difficult part of the 1984 race for you? It's always the same story. The most difficult part is to start. Then me to collect the money for starting a race event, which is very expensive. And then all the rest is the second race. Now tell us a little bit about the boat you're racing today. Well, the boat is a, a, something is a, is a very emotional boat. It's a piece of history. It's a boat who has won more in the history of offshore because this boat was the time world champion, 1988, winning 16 races one after the other, and 1989 with poor Stefano Casiraghi that was world champion in Atlantic City. Well, Fabio, thank you very much. We wish you and your crew a very success and successful race. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you.
Plymouth. We've got uh, a number of finishers, I think nearly 20 so far, um, including this very impressive rib. And just coming in here is the flying flipper. Made it safe and sound. Tell us about the conditions out there. Solar was fine, it was a bit, a bit choppy, and things were okay. The headlands were a bit awkward at uh, France and Orbans, but Lime Bay, as, you, as always, was just. Yeah. Bad? Yeah, we were knocked back to about 25 mm. knots most of the time. You'd get on top of it for a little while, but then a big one would come yeah. and you'd go skywards, and you know, oh. we're not youngsters, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you see any other boats while you were out there? A couple, a little yeah. bit, but not, uh, not very much. No. No. Okay, David, thanks very much. I can see you need a drink. <laughs> yes. John Fuller with us. John, uh, congratulations in order today. Thank you very much. Yeah, it went all right. Yeah. Were you third in? Third in, yeah, but I think um, it's not really third, is it? Because the other boat started after us. But uh, first in class, which is, we're happy with that. Very now, happy. this is a brand new boat. Yeah. Put together the day before. <laughs> We were still doing stuff this morning. There's still stuff to do, if I'm honest. Um, 3.30 this morning, we were trying to launch it in Portsmouth on a slipway in the rain because we'd missed all the cranage yesterday, um, and that failed. So we, the guys at Driver's Wharf very kindly launched it at 6 o'clock this morning. So, uh, yeah, it's all been a bit last minute. The first time I ever got in it, actually to drive it, or ever, you know, throttle it, was on the way up to the muster this morning. I've not been in it before, so... So we're lucky. And how does the boat how does the boat behave? It's very good. It's very good. Well, I, I need to sort my driving position out because it's not terribly comfortable. I can't tip my head down. I'm the front of the helmet down to uh, to relieve my neck. But it no, it runs nicely. It's not terribly fast. You know, they're quite small motors for a boat that big. They're only, they're only um, 250 horsepower a side, and it runs 60 miles an hour, empty on flat water. So um, so today I think the best we saw was about. 57. So it's not terribly fast, but it, it was obviously fast enough. Well, John, that's a tremendous effort. Well Thank done, and we much. look forward to watching you go round Britain 2008. Thank you very much, David. Cheers. Okay. What was it like going across Lime Bay? Be honest, it, it, ne it never seems to end. It just, Lime Bay, you just, you know, just go across Lime Bay, and it, a bit more, a bit more, and it just never seems to end. It's a really long way. What was the uh, most difficult part of the race for you? Um, the snottiest bit we found was off Portland. We just got into the wrong bit of water for about five or ten minutes. Um, shook us about a bit, but we got mm. back on track and we were away again. Any problems with the boat? Not really, no. She's fine. Did you see anybody else out there? Um, yeah, we, saw, <laughs> we saw a few people, yeah, um, going in various directions, to be honest. Um, the big boats caught us up out about Portland. That was really impressive to see those go by. Yes. Really impressive. Did you see Wet Punk out there? Yes, we saw Hannes go by. Mm. But he broke down, I don't know if you oh, saw. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, he was flying when we saw him. Yeah, he's lost both engines. It looked like Fabio was, was backing off and taking it calmly for the first mm. leg. OK, Dave, thanks so much. Thanks we'll have that. Sarah Miranda here safe and sound. What was it like out there? Amazing. So exciting. The start was incredible. Um, flat calms, you're all going flat out, we're doing 50 knots. Up the salient, yeah, going down the salient was really fantastic with everyone around us. It was really quite spectacular. So that's your first experience of a start. Yep. <laughs> now, what about when you got out into the rougher stuff? How did the boat perform? Um, well, just past, just as we got to the needles, the the sea changed drastically, and it was pretty rough. And uh, so we had to drop our speed down to probably I don't know, thirty knots. Was it? Yeah. Oh. And. Um, it was really quite rough, actually, and a lot of slamming around. And that roughness has caused some casualties uh, with some of the boats. Uh, did you see any boats out there that had stopped or were in difficulties? Yeah, we, we, the, the course we took was fairly direct um, route, straight well, we, here, really, and so we kept very far off. Um, we aimed to Portland go five and miles south of Portland. So we didn't we really see anyone at all. Yeah. <laughs> we were very much out there on our own. It can be pretty lonely, can't it? We, we were really lonely. <laughs> we were very lonely. <laughs> and we were really cheesed off that the iPod didn't work. <laughs> it's got no music. It's a really good so idea. have you any, fixed for tomorrow. Have you any idea where your position is provisionally? No idea. No, no. I, I, well, I don't know. I think we've done sort of reasonably well seeing who's in here I know now that, and um, who's sort of coming in. So, I mean, I'm, we did okay. Well, yeah. congratulations. <laughs>
See you later. Thank you. It's very <laughs> fortunate to have Titty with us this afternoon. <laughs> now, and the way now, you say that, eh? Tell me, tell me, what was it like out there today? Oh, we had a brilliant day. It was good fun. We, we, uh, we had a little bit of a problem with the tracking system at first, but then everything sorted itself out. And uh, no, good fun and a good start. And uh, uh, we enjoyed ourselves, uh, ourselves the, uh, the whole race. Uh, I can say that the only thing I'm worried about now is how I'm ever going to get my hair to look good again. Well, it's so, you know, if we haven't got bigger problems than that. I don't think you need worry too much about that. What about okay. the performance of the boat? Excellent, as always, I have to say. You know, we, uh, we, uh, everyone went closer to the shore than we did. M most boats made that choice, and uh, we decided not to, and uh, that was a good choice, because this boat loves that kind of weather. And did you have any trouble av avoiding the exclusion zones? No, I think we uh, we did a good job there. Uh, uh, Michael, our navigator, he did his homework. Well, thank you very much. We we'll look forward to interviewing you again round the round the event. Every stop. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got uh, Jeremy Bennett and Tim Carey. Tim Carey with us this afternoon, racing on tequila. Tequila. Tell us about your start and how the start of the race went. Uh, the start was good. We were um, we got a little bit chopped up by some of the big boat yeah, chop. The, the boat's only eight and a half metres long, so um, the big uh, the big swell not so good for us. But we did fine. We, we, we went well. We went about 45 knots down through the solar. We're from Livingston, so straight past our houses. Fine. Do you have any experience of uh, par boat racing? Not a lot. No, no. We are, we're sort of amateurs in this. I've, I did one actually in uh, in Egypt once a couple of years ago. So, no, we're very much the amateurs of the fleet. The race was made more interesting for us today because uh, we uh, came across um, a boat that was obviously stopped. We thought it had an orange uh, distress flag, so we went. We, we called into race control. They told us to go and check it out because they thought they had engine failure. When we arrived, um, it was obvious the boat was sinking. The rear end of the boat was going down in the water. They deployed the life raft and they were they were sort of climbing in. So. Um, we rescued them <laughs> as their boat went down. We've got some good pictures. I don't know if you can, you, we will be able to show you on the telephone, but we've got some great pictures of the boat actually going down. And the captain stood there in true English fashion at the prow and then jumped off into the lifeboat. Can actually, you... It wasn't English fashion because they were German. Sorry, they were German. The Germans have sunk in Lime Bay. I gather that's boat 99. Boat 99 is no longer. It's 55 metres down if anyone wants to go and try and get it back. So the main thing is, are the crew safe? The, the crew are completely safe. We, off, we were going to bring them here, but then um, the life raft arrived from, the life lifeboat arrived from Tor Bay. And so they've gone back to Tor Bay, it's a bit closer to home. Well, thank you for that story and uh, for saving or at least being on station for one of your fellow competitors. We wish you well in the rest of the race. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. We've got Tom Williams with us here from TFO. Tom, this is a Revenger 25. Yep. Just come into the sun so I can get it, get you a little bit better there. Um, how did you buy the boat? We, we bought it on the internet about a year and a half ago, and uh, just been a long project since then, really. And what engines, what, what power unit have you we, got? We've got a Yanmar 315, six cylinder. You had a little bit of a problem yesterday, with a lot of smoke. It was, yeah, well, it looked a big problem, but it was a little problem. Uh, the exhaust riser split, so it's just pumping the exhaust straight into the boat. It's uh, quite messy, but minor, really. So. Now, I gather that you've been trying to check on the history of the boat, which is yep. now leaving us. Tell me, who do you think owned the boat before you? We're, we're really not sure. It could have been Lady Aaron's, and we, it was definitely in the era of the, the last race. So it could have done the race before, but we're not 100% sure. Now, you said there was one particular feature about the inner liner of the boat. There, there's no inner moulding on the boat, which hers also didn't have. And the engines are offset to the right, I believe, which was the same markings as hers as well. So, so originally, she was a twin-engine boat. Now, no, converted single. single. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Tom, very much. Yeah. Uh, how did you get on yesterday? Uh, we, we did well, considering 
doing the problem which knocked us back on speed a lot, but we got third in class and uh, yeah, we weren't far behind the rest. So. How was it coming across Lime Bay? It's good, yeah, a bit bumpy, but no, it's good. Did yeah. you leap out of the water a lot? Uh, I tried to keep it in. Charlie's on the throttles and I'm steering, so he, he's pretty good on that, keeping it in the water. So. Well, it's a testimony, isn't it, to it the strength indeed. and the yeah. design of the hull. So we're racing tomorrow. Good man, thanks. <laughs> Well, this is a classic. Johnny Calcutt is now modeling the famous T-shirt that he commissioned during the 1984 Round Britain Powerboat Race. Johnny, can you just expose the left edge? There we go. Heineken's a man's drink. Anyone can sink a Carlsberg. Now, that was done, Johnny, when Carlsberg sank off Land's End. Well, they were done, actually, five hours later. So by the time we got into Milford Haven, that they were already done and our guys were wearing them on the dock, which caused a big fight with a guy called Chris Moss, who was marketing director of Carlsberg at the time, and he was not a happy man to see these T-shirts on the dock. And I He'd suffered enough pain. I seem to remember you were responsible for refreshing us with Heineken. Well, I think we were, with a lovely girl called Pamela, who I've just been uh, reminded about, who on every stop was there with the Carl... Uh, with, no, sorry. <laughs> I get my, my mouth out, with the Heineken. Fantastic. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I now have Marcus Hendrick with us. Marcus has had a bit of a sad story to tell. What happened? Well, actually, we were racing G, and as they were side by side to us at the beginning, and after hours came from one middle of nowhere again, we had several minutes alongside each other, and suddenly our refs dropped down. I immediately took off the gear, and at the same moment, all village alarms went on. While we opened the hatches, we had lots of water flooding in, with some sort of a dive we found that we had a crack in the boat in the hull that something from outside had stepped a certain part in which was so big that we couldn't really solve that anymore. There was so much water coming in. Actually, finally we found out it was 10 minutes from the moment it happened to the moment the boat was gone. So it was a very big uh, object we must have hit. So the we, boat has sunk? The boat has sunk. It's down on 50 meters of water depth, so we don't see a really good chance to get it up again. That's terrible. Now tell me a little bit, what was the boat? Well, it was a supermarine swordfish, heavily built, 8-ton boat with twin Yanmar, uh, 440 horsepower engines, capable of doing at least 36 knots in that setup and uh, a design of Alan Bernard, one of the most famous um, naval architects uh, England had in the 60s, 70s, doing all the ferry boats, so it was one of these designs. So very classic okay. boat. So Marcus, are you out of the race? Well, we have some plans, as we could get hold of most of our safety stuff. We only need something to bring us any further, so there are more legs to come. And if we find a solution with the race committee getting us in with some other toy to play with, we will do it. So is that code for saying you're thinking of buying or acquiring another boat and, and re-entering the event? Yes, we do. Well, Marcus, that is perseverance if ever there was. We wish you well in your search for a boat, and perhaps we'll be interviewing you on board shortly. Have a try. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. So you got the engine going? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, we appear, we appear to have, we hope we have. Though. So when are you firing it up then? Once she's in, we'll put her in and off we go. And then uh, on the way out to the start we'll know. If it's wrong we'll have to come back. If it's right we'll be, we'll be off. Thanks. Extreme ways are back again. Extreme places I didn't know. I broke everything. Amanda and Sarah, Miranda and Sarah, and fresh from across the Irish Sea. How was it, girls? Amazing. 
absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. The conditions were really good. The coming out of Milford Haven was horrible. Very lumpy, very choppy, and took us quite a long time to sort of get out past the smalls. And once we were past that, um, we were just 50 knots the whole way. I hear the boats are actually launching off the, the uh, waves uh, at coming out of Milford Haven, or should I say the swell? Well, we've certainly were, well, haven't we? <laughs> Airborne? Were you fully airborne? I think a couple of times. I think we could well have been airborne. But it was very nasty. It was a very nasty swell, but also all the wake and the chop created by the boats, because um, we were a bit far behind, made it even worse. So, so who was navigating? Miranda, top navigator. Okay, right. Any problems with the uh, navigation? No, no, apart from trying to use the touch screen navigator, Garmin chart plotter when you're doing 50 knots in about CC. Oh, we won't tell Garmin. What about you, Sarah? Was there any difficulty for you at all in the um, race? I got hit by a seagull on the head. Oh dear. Gosh. <laughs> the seagull, Attack but not me. something else from the seagull. No. An actual seagull got right. me on a helmet. Quite we saw dolphins. We saw dolphins, which were very lovely. We tried very hard to avoid them. And you did keep away from them. We did. Yeah. They were, they were, they were the quite beach. curious. Right. Came quite close to the boat. But they were they were, they were very the beautiful. And what speed were you doing when you saw the dolphins? Forty-five, fifty. Gosh, they were planing dolphins then. <laughs> but they came coming sort of towards us. They just a Wonderful. So, in a word, Sarah, how would you sum up your day? Brilliant. Thank you so much, girls. Well done. John Fuller's here now. Uh, he's just come in third. Um, behind two of the ribs. It was definitely a rib day today as it's so flat. As wet from fires up to go in to fuel up. like out there gone um, it started off uh, a bit too flat for us and um, so we were we got left behind but then slowly slowly all the ones were stopping breaking down we waved as we went past um, and then uh, later on in the race it, uh, it roughened up a bit and then we saw a few more that are broken down uh, a couple more just before the finish line are broken down unfortunately for them we crossed the line, didn't see a committee boat anywhere, but um, so yeah, what, we, were, we got there. What's your uh, position in here to Edinburgh today? I've no idea. Right. All I know is we're in, we saw other boats coming in off, way off the wrong line. Right. Yeah, so we've got to investigate this. So okay. So how far, uh, how far are you up the fleet in the overall rankings? Uh, last I looked, we were 24th. Um, and uh, we've been getting a steady third, fourth. But you're still a gold competitor. I'm still a gold. So That's there the we are. Thing. Gordon for gold. We're still in the shout. Well done. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye. I would stand in line for this. There's always room in life for this. Intrepid race of John with us. John, what happened today? We had uh, we had exactly the same problem we had on the Ireland to Oban run. We've had a harmonic balancer on the motor fail on the other motor this time. So we've had a starboard motor fail, sorted that out, and now the port's gone. So 
we've run 200 miles at 38 miles an hour. Not much fun. Was that on one engine you can plane that boat? Um, no, it's running on one engine and the other in guardian mode. When right. the harmonic balancer goes, it loses its, its trigger feed and, and um, basically the motor goes into guardian and it'll run at about 1,500 revs and it's enough to do 38 miles an hour. So. Well, knowing your tenacity, you'll be back on the water tomorrow. We'll be back on the water, which is rather yeah. annoying. To, two yeah. legs on the trot to have yeah. problems, you know, so we don't right. need that. Tough luck, John. Well, better luck on the next one down to Newcastle. Thank you, David. Thanks, bye. Right, well, we've got John with us. John, who did you have on board today? today Today it was myself, Nathan Ward, our excellent engineer, um, uh, David Binden and Richard Hoskins, our navigators. So I guess you've got a couple of stories to tell. Tell us about going overboard today. Oh, we uh, came upon 747 and they had a rope around their props and luckily we were carrying a dive and so we were on board so I jumped in and uh, freed it up for them. This isn't the first time you helped them, what about last night? <laughs> Um, last night they got their new shafts back and fixed propeller and then they had problems lining them up and we came over to help and Nathan, our engineer, realised that some of the engine mounts had gone. So luckily the Cummins support guys were here, so we had four new engine mounts, we had to crane their engine out, fix new mounts. Um, myself, Nathan, Fred and Jonathan from their team were and put it all back in, line it back up again, and finish at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> so how much sleep did you have last night? An hour and a half. <laughs> and then you've driven this leg, 211 nautical miles. Yeah. How did the boat perform? Lovely, yeah, really good. really good. Well, this is a testimony to the boat and the crew, and great sportsmanship there. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Francis Whitley, the Shakespeare boat 130, how was it for you today? We had a super race today, we had the good old dice with the Revenger 25 and um, it was a really good run so we came into the marina, looked over the side and the bilge pumps were working, opened up the engine hatch and found we were really in a sinking uh, condition. So I manned the hand bilge pump and uh, Stuart motored it down to the crane. So what was the problems? I th we think the exhaust manifold's cracked. Now you're a father and son team, I gather. Yes. How does it feel to be out with your son and heir? <laughs> oh, we, we always uh, enjoy it very much, yes. It's uh, his wife's birthday today. Well, happy birthday to her. Now this is a boat that you designed and built? Uh, well, Lorne Campbell designed it, we built her. And what is she powered by? A 2315 Yanmar diesel. Now what is that giving you in the way of speed? Uh, about 45 knots, but we think she's a 50 knot boat with a bit of propeller tuning, but we haven't really had time to uh, sort her out. So Francis, have you managed to complete all the legs so far? Well, we have at the moment, and we're going to work like, um, like anything to try and do it for tomorrow. So Francis and son, your gold entrance and still gold participators. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Francis is driving the Shakespeare boat. What was it like today, Francis? Uh, well, we had a super mechanic and he managed to uh, get our engine sorted out. We finished about 11 o'clock last night, started again at 5 in the morning, and we had a super race again. And uh, I don't think there's any more problems at the moment. So how many miles have you come today? I think it was about 130. And how, what were the conditions like out there? Uh, if, we, if you hugged the coast, it, it was uh, very good, but out of sea, it wasn't very pleasant at all. Really? We um, gained a bit by cutting St Ab's Head quite close and cutting in by the Farn Islands. And who were you racing against? Uh, did you see how the boat's out there? Uh, we always seem to be tied up with a little 25 foot Revenger of Charlie Williams Hawks, and uh, wherever we go, it's almost as if a string pulls us together. Thank you very much, Francis. So it's lovely to see you here. Well, good morning, Mike Lloyd, race director. How are you feeling about your race? And we're now about two thirds round in Newcastle. I want to go home. <laughs> no, as I said before, this is about 95% pain, 5% pleasure. 5% of the pleasure is up there in the helicopter filming the race. And we had a great time today watching the, watching the fleet come up to Newcastle. Uh, a lot of clever things were going on there. On there, on there. And it's good to see boats running very well. Interesting to see boats stuffing and getting complete shocks. But it was a good race. We could see the water very heavy coming out of Edinburgh and gradually flattening out and then the boats exceed, you know, get faster and faster and faster. Now you've got a, you've got a remarkably large number of boats still in the race. Mm -hmm. 
How many are there still up and running? Um, do you I know? think about 38. 38. Think, I'm, I'm guessing, but it's 38. That's extremely good. Well, congratulations on a marvellous event. The feedback from the competitors is second to none. Yeah. So you go and have your well-deserved yeah, lunch. I'm hungry. I'm hungry okay. food. Good Thanks, man. David. Well, I have Titi with me, and she's going to tell us a little bit about how the boat went today. We couldn't be happier. Vilda was, uh, she was doing really, really well, and uh, we had some really good speed. We didn't slow down the whole race, so uh, no, we were really pleased when we came here. We were sort of like giggling, actually. We had such a nice time. We were singing songs together again, so now it was a nice day. So you're a happy gang? Very much so, yeah. Now, and it was so nice with the barbecue when we came here on top of everything. Exactly. Now really tell good. us, uh, just remind us about the boat. It's, uh, it's the big black one. It's uh, boat number nine, and uh, it's a switch-built boat by uh, Henrik Dahl and Oke Mannefeldt, who's a well-known name. And, um, well, she, she's owned by Mikko Oikari, who's also our skipper. And uh, what else do you want to know? She's got she's two, two <laughs> Volvo diesels. Two Volvo Penta diesels, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, how fast? Uh, well, we can do a little over 70. We haven't yet, though. OK, well. now, how are you in the overall placings at the moment? Uh, yesterday, we were a total six. Six overall? Yeah. That's very competitive. Mm -hmm. Now, Titi, I understand you're used to being interviewed. Tell us something about your career. <laughs> uh, it seems as if more and more people are finding out that I do a morning show on the Swedish radio, a national morning show. And I'm happy to say we're the biggest morning show in Sweden. So I'm Quite a few listeners following the race as well, and since we're the only Swedish boat in the race, there's a bit of a stir actually at home, so it's good yeah. fun. So, do I understand you're actually broadcasting from the boat? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been doing that as whenever I don't have to hold on with both hands. I even send text messages that they read up and make a whole dramatic story around, I suppose, but I've also actually phoned in a few reports. Well, Titi, thank you so much, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And you. Here we are. At Lowestoft, one more leg to go to Portsmouth, nearly 50 boats entering. It must be a tremendous feeling for you as somebody who's been involved with the sport for longer than most of this. From 1969 event you took part in, the 1984 event that you organized, and now here you are at the pinnacle, one leg to go. Just tell us what your feeling is right now. Well, I appreciate what you say, David, but um, I didn't really organize this race. I was delighted to put my name to it and also persuade some of my foreign um, friends and competitors to ensure they came to our event. And I think the credit has to be given to Mike Lloyd and his fellow committee directors who really did build this thing together. I mean, I've tried to help wherever I can. Uh, and I think to have got as near as damn it 50 boats in this day and age is a, a pretty remarkable achievement. And the fact that we've ended up one way or another with very nearly what we started out with. Um, I, a is machinery has improved, equipment has improved, enthusiasm has improved. Um, but they, the boats are, generally speaking, uh, staying alive and therefore means that uh, marine technology has improved as well. Well, Tim, um, thank you very much. We'll look forward to talking to you again tomorrow for some final comments. The prize giving is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Monday, um, at the Royal Naval and Royal Albert Yacht Club, itself steeped in history for many hundreds of years. We had a pre-start celebration party there. We were greatly honored that Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, attended that occasion and uh, gave us some wise words at the end of the evening and shook hands with all the competitors. And we've got 25% uh, of our fleet are from overseas, which in itself I think is remarkable. Uh, and they were delighted, obviously, to have the opportunity to meet her. And I think the whole thing has gone, generally speaking, extremely well. Well, um, Tim, thank you so much for that. Whether you accept it or not, 
most people acknowledge that without you, we wouldn't be here today. So, Tim Powell, race chairman, the Round Britain 2008. Now you have that well-deserved scotch. Well, I'm having a sip of whiskey. Um, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for tomorrow that everybody gets home safe. Thank you, David, very Thank much. Thank you so much, Tim. have the pleasure of seeing you racing. So okay. here we go, the girls from Pulsar. Excellent. Uh, which team are you with then? The best team. The right British team. The best. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I, I'm, now, I'm now focusing on the correct <laughs> name. Thank you. And your name is? Garmin Girl. Hello Garmin Girl, it suits you. Well, go on, speak. No, what do you have to oh. say? <laughs> Right, that's enough. He'll go too far. <laughs> <laughs> 